Hi guys, welcome to another Teach to Code with Mario. So today we're going to explore some more of the scanner. <clears throat> In this one I actually wanted to do Pythagorean theorem. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So we're going to do a Java application. We'll do scanner. Let's just call it PIF. And then we'll say uh, test. Pythagorean scanner PIF test. All right. So if you don't remember Pythagorean theorem, or it's been a while, that's essentially where a squared. So we denote that with the caret like that. Plus b squared is equal to c squared. So in order to do this with the scanner, we're going to need a couple things. We'll need double variables for the math, right? A, B, C. <coughs> Oops. But we're also going to need some strings for this, and I'll show you why. So we'll call them S, A, S, B, and S, C basically the string versions of the numbers all right so next we're going to want to import our scanner so good old pythagorean calculates the side of the missing side of a right triangle it's been a while since he's done it all right so system dot in into the scanner bam don't forget to do your import so now we're going to go ahead and jump into it. First we're going to ask the user system dot out dot print ln. We're going to ask the user do you know a. And then we're going to go sa is equal to scan dot next. Okay now that we have that. We're going to copy and paste this. We're going to do it three times because there's three, three variables we're using, right? So A, B, C, S, A, S, B, S, C. And I guess what we should put is actually what we want the user to, to type in. Why? Y or N. So that way the user knows exactly what they're supposed to do. Alright. So now from here what we're going to do is we're going to check something. So we're going to say if SA dot equals. So equals checks for an object. <clears throat> we're going to check for the string y. We're also going to check if sa sb dot equals y. So if the user hit yes for a and b variables, let's go ahead and do some math. So first of all we want to say system dot out dot print ln what is a then here we're going to go to a is equal to scan dot next double. So we could copy and paste that because we'll also need b, right? So let's go ahead and grab b for the user right away. Okay. Now we need to do the math behind it. So, I forgot we're actually going to need one more double. Let's go ahead and call this answer. Let's just set it equal to zero. It's better if we initialize this one. Okay, so answer is going to be equal to math. So, we're going to use the math package dot sqrt for square roots. Because at the end of it, you have to square root to solve for the variable. And we're going to say a 
times A plus B times B. So that's how we'll handle the logic for this first one. So we're going to copy and paste it because there's three scenarios that could happen. So I pasted it three times. So we have to be careful what we're doing. So else if, let's say they do know A but they don't know B, they know C, okay? So they know A and they know C. So they know A, they know C. So we would have to ask them, well, what is that A and C that you know? No, this one's a little bit different because it's going to be C times C is minus A times A. Now, it's C times C minus A times A because up here, essentially what happens if we know the A, we're going to subtract it from the C. And then we'll square root it from the B. So now let's assume we don't know A, right? We know B. And we know C. And actually it might even be quicker if we do this. Maybe I shouldn't have copied and pasted it right away. I'm going to copy and paste right away because this guy has C for me. So we don't know A, we know B. That's for me to change anyway. But as long as your code looks like this, I promise you it'll run. Okay. And then at the end, what we should probably do is say else system dot out dot print ln. Let's say error not enough information to solve. All right. So the only thing I see that we didn't do is we didn't do a print for our answer. So we also want to print out the answer, right? If we don't print out the answer, we're basically doing all this work to keep it in the background. So your answer is answer. I'm going to give it a backslash in here too. I like to do that to my when I print out my answers after I do input from the user, it's just something I've gotten used to. Alrighty. So I think we're set. Let's go ahead and give this a run. So do we know A? Yes. Do we know B? Yes. Do we know C? No. So what is A? It is 3. What is A? It's 4. So your answer is 5. So this is good old 3, 4, 5 on Pythagorean theorem. So let's go ahead and say, no, we don't know A. Yes, we know B. Yes, we know C. So B would be 4. C would be 5. We got 3. Perfect. So now let's go ahead and say we know A. We don't know B. We do know C. So that's 3. Five, we should get four. Beautiful. So the only other output I think we could have is where we don't know any of them. Too not enough information to solve. And then I don't know what happens if we put a yes for all of them. Oh, so there is some kind of error there too, right? If you hit yes for all of them, it doesn't go through. So, you know, not everything's perfect, but, you know, the only error we're getting right now is if the user puts in, punches in, they know all coordinates. So, if you know all coordinates, well, you wouldn't really need the application, right? But anyways, um, <laughs> I'll think about how to handle that exception. For now, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like and subscribe. If you're enjoying the videos, you know, more are on their way. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.